John chapter 4 and verse number 23. John chapter 4. John chapter 4 and verse number 23. John chapter 4 and verse number 23. If you are there, shout glory. Glory. Ah, uh, you can say it with your chest. Shout glory. Glory. I want us to read it together. One, two, three. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. One more time. One, two, three. But the hour cometh. And now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. One more time. One, two, three. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. One more time. One, two, three. But the hour cometh and now is. When the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. One more time with everything that is in you. But, but the hour cometh and now is. When the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. I want you to touch your neighbor say neighbor. Neighbor. Are you a true worshiper? Are you a true worshiper? Shake another neighbor. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. Are you a true worshiper? Are you a true worshiper? Find another neighbor. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. Are you a true worshiper? Are you a true worshiper? I want you to look at another neighbor. Say, neighbor, you, I'm talking to you. Neighbor, you, I'm talking to you. Are you a true worshiper? Are you a true worshiper? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may sit in heavenly places Amen. glory to god glory to god i say glory to god glory to god now i'm going to be teaching bada boom bang 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 i pray that you are attentive that the word of god will enter your heart because the word of god is what transforms you is what changes you now i'm going to explain something to you that i need you to comprehend and this will elevate your spiritual capacity. Amen. You have to understand that the purpose of prayer is not merely to pray, but it is also the increase of capacity that you receive by being with God. Now, that capacity must be expanded. Listen to me. Must be expanded. Why? Because when your capacity is increased, then the people around you can benefit from what God has bestowed in you. Now, I'm going to explain something that many times, you see, the issue with the internet is this. Especially those who are, like to be gatekeepers. I don't know when they became gatekeepers, but they chose, they nominated themselves beyond the Holy Spirit. To be gatekeepers. Do I think the church needs elders? Absolutely. Even me in our church here, we have elders. I have elders literally by age and by experience. I am gifted by God. God has given me a lot of understanding. But it is always good to have elders. In fact, my, the people I love to spend time with are men and women that are older than me. Because that's where you grow. There are things you don't learn because you prayed. You can only learn from somebody's experience. They have been there before. You haven't. So there are things they've discovered about God and the ways of God that they can teach you. Not because you prayed, but they can bestow upon you wisdom. This is why you read the Bible. You read to get somebody's experience because you can learn from experience. Now, your spiritual capacity must increase. Because you have to understand that even though we all have the Lord Jesus. A few years ago I was teaching with my father and 
this clip was completely cut out of context. And it's okay to me because uh, if you don't hear from God, you will never hear from God anyway unless you become humble. And I said that, and I was talking about Peter being an access point to the Lord Jesus. That Peter is the key, but Jesus is the door. And people who didn't listen to anything because people are so spiritually dull, they don't understand what I was saying. We all pray. We all are born again that are here and most of the people online. But why is it that I have to come to uh, 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 Apostle Gershon for him to pray for me to get something from God? Why didn't God give me that thing by himself? Why did the man at the beautiful gate ask for silver and gold, but Peter comes and says, Silver and gold I don't have, but I have something. And what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. That tells you that all of us have an access to God that another doesn't have. If we all had the same thing, then we will not need one another. Amen. It's good. This is a simple reality. We all have different graces because we all have things that God has bestowed upon us that he hasn't given to another. So it is foolish when the church tries to equalize everybody. No, we are not the same. It defeats the purpose if we are the same. We all have things from the Lord God. There are things that God will listen to me and he will not listen to you. And there are things that God will listen from you and you will not listen from me. Why? Based on the grace he has given, we all have accesses to God that are different. We have a general access that God is our father. He loves us. He has forgiven us. We can uh, pray. We can speak to God. But when it comes to access in the spirit, we don't have the same access. We don't. We absolutely don't. We absolutely don't. The Lord Jesus came as a unique access to the Father. Nobody had access to the Father until Jesus came. We all prayed to God. The, 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 our patriarchs prayed to God, but they never addressed God as Father. That access was only with Jesus. The Lord Jesus comes and he says, now my God has become your God. My Father has also become your Father. He has given a unique access based on the grace of the Son. The apostles come to us and they give us access to the man Jesus that they spent time with. They said, we beheld his glory. And they said, if anyone preaches to you another gospel... Except the one we've preached to you. Even if it's an angel, let him be accursed. Why? Because we were with him. We know what we are giving you. Notice they made it exclusive to themselves. Why? Because of being with him. So you see somebody like Peter coming and saying, What I have, not I'm going to pray for you. I have something. And what I have, I can give to you. You see the problem is we have a lot of people who are praying but have no capacity to give anything. And you're teaching. Amen. Oh, I know I poked somebody. Amen. We have a lot of people praying, but they have nothing to give anyone. They will tell you, go and pray and find God for yourself. Wait, why am I finding God for myself? When you are saying you are anointed by God to represent God to me, you should make my journey easy. Amen. You should make the yoke lighter. You are giving me access to God. Remember what the Lord Jesus said, and I saw my brother, Apostle uh, Daniel, posted this. And, 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 uh, and, and he said this, and it touched my heart when I saw his status. He said, anyone who tells you it is a difficult journey to walk with God, or it is difficult to walk with God, I'm paraphrasing. He said, you have heard the wrong gospel. Yeah. Jesus said, my yoke is lighter. So anything heavy did not come from him. Boy. Amen. Uh, you didn't hear what I said. Anyone who brings you to Christ, the yoke ought to be lighter. 
Now, speaking of capacity, and we're going somewhere. Oh, Jesus. I feel it in my bones and every area. Now, 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 here. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers, now who is the true worshipper? Who is a true worshipper? Who is a true worshipper? Everyone in church, I was telling, uh, there was a time I was sitting, I think, with either Benny or I was sitting with uh, Benny, I believe, or maybe it was my son, Mike. I can't remember who it was with. And I was telling them about worship. I was telling them, the guys who are standing here singing for you, they are actually not the ones worshipping. They are representing your worship before God. They are not leading you to worship. They are standing before God on your behalf while you stand behind them. And they present your worship to God. So if you are weak... They are supposed to strengthen you and fill in the gaps that you don't have in the presence of God. Come on, brother. Hey. So I was explaining to them, it is not about you having a good voice. Because worship is not a voice. If it is spiritual, then it has nothing to do with vocal cords. But they are a representation of the church. That's why we select the best ones, the consecrated ones, so that when they stand, but some of you think you're watching a concert, but you don't understand when you are lifting your voice to worship God, they are taking the worship and giving it to God. My God. Amen. Because they are the ones who are leading. So good. In reality, in the physical, they are standing facing you. But in the spirit, they are standing before you and you are standing behind them in the presence of God. Amen. Are you understanding? That is actually the real picture. But let me go deep. Who is a true worshiper? <laughs> when the true worshippers, notice it means they are fake worshippers. They are true worshippers. And they are fake worshippers. They are true worshippers and they are fake worshippers. Now notice, nevertheless, God is not disqualifying the fake worshipper. The fake here is you just don't know how to worship yet. You see, the problem with the church is that if you don't get something right, you are fake. You are false. That's not true. God has never chosen a perfect vessel. In fact, that's what shows the sovereignty and the power of God. Amen. That he doesn't need you to be perfect because if you're perfect, then the glory goes to you. If you don't get things right, it actually proves that God is gracious, is merciful. That is the evidence of it. Of course, we are not pursuing to be not uh, competent or incompetent. We are not seeking to be bad. It's just that nobody knows it all. We are still growing. Where true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Now, why is it saying in spirit? It's not saying worship with your spirit. It's saying worship in spirit, meaning this is a location. It is not talking about I felt it. It is talking about a location. If you read Paul, Paul says... I bear witness before God whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Notice when we serve God, we don't serve God with our heart. We serve God with our spirit. This is why we can manifest spiritual gifts, not soul gifts or heart gifts. Because when you serve God, you serve God with your spirit. Not just with your mouth, with what? Your spirit. So if I can serve God with my spirit, then I can worship God also with my spirit. Because God being a spiritual being, my worship to him will be reflected in the physical by, by what I'm doing. But the evidence of it will be with my spirit. 
So in spirit is not talking about with, within you. It is speaking about a location. In spirit and in truth. Now, in truth there people think being honest. No, that's not what it's speaking about. Because you being a believer, you must always be what? Honest. That is a standard. But why is he saying in truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It is speaking about Jesus. In truth, not with the truth. In, meaning you are within somebody. Come on. This is good. In the spiritual realm, within Jesus, because the only sacrifice of worship, the only voice of worship that God receives is from Christ. This is the truth. For we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched by our infirmities. You see, everything you give to God, somebody represents you before God. Yes. When you pray, let me tell you something that many of you don't understand. When we pray, our prayer rises up. An angel will take that prayer and go and stand before God and represent you. That is what you find in the book of Revelation and other, uh, other chapters. You see the prayers of the saints being presented before God. You see Cornelius being God responding by an angel coming to tell him, Hey, your prayer has risen up for a memorial before God. There is a protocol in the presence of God. Even though God is omnipresent, there is still a spiritual protocol that is beyond sight. When you cry, there is an angel that collects. When you are worshipping truly and tears come out, there is an angel that takes your tears and takes it to heaven. They pour it in a book and it writes your... Wow, come on. Your tears. That is why David said, are my, pray are my tears not collected in a bottle? There is somebody who collects your prayer. Even your tears. Now hear me, hear me. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. Now, why is God looking for this level of worship? Because you have to understand, there is a big difference between the Holy Spirit being in a place and the presence of God being in a place. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent. He's in hell right now. Even if I make my bed in hell, there you are also. He said, where can I run? Where can I run from your presence? Where can I hide from your spirit? Even if I make my bed in hell, you are there also. The Spirit of God is... God fills all things. But his presence is not everywhere. There is a big difference between the Holy Spirit is inside of me. He is over me and the presence of God. If you go to Genesis chapter 3. And I'm going to try to fly through this. Genesis chapter number 3 from verse 8. Genesis 3, from verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Adam and Eve did not experience the Spirit of God. They experienced the presence of God. When God wants to make you powerful, He does not just give you His Spirit, yes. but His presence. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Right, let, me, let me talk to somebody that is ready to hear me. When God wants to make you an edifice, when God wants to make you a man and a woman of great power, of great authority, yes. God does not give you His Spirit alone. His presence. This is why you find the apostles 
they had been beaten. And Peter and John and the others gathered. They said, Father, look at what they are doing to us because of your son Jesus. Stretch out your hands and do what? More miracles. What they were asking for was not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came to give them boldness. But what they were asking God for was more of his presence. Let me explain to you why true worship is necessary. When a man and a woman of God understand the definition of worship, you develop a capacity that gives the eternal God access to the material world with his person, not just his spirit. That person can be touched, can be felt, even by people who don't have the eyes to see him. So when the presence is with you, there are certain things you can do in the material world that a regular person cannot do because there is a spiritual backing. God himself is walking alongside with you. Amen. That there is no door you will not open. Amen. There is no sea that will stand before you. Yeah. There is no mountain that will be too high for you. Yeah. There is a realm you will tap into. Yeah. So Adam and Eve were powerful, not because they were pure. They were powerful because the presence of God had been established in their lives. You see, when the presence of God, when you build yourself in the capacity to encounter the presence of God, it becomes automatic. You didn't hear what I said. It becomes automatic. It is no longer a matter of prayer. It's a matter of whenever God wants to visit his friend. Whenever God wants to visit his child, he will just come. Amen. He will just show up. Yeah. It will no longer be about father in the name of Jesus. God can just come at any time because there is somebody that has carried a capacity. To reveal the presence and the person of God. Many of you who are in ministry, you struggle with, with miracles. You struggle with the prophetic. You struggle with these things because you have not understood the key that is the presence of God. You see, the Holy Spirit can be in a place and nothing will change. But the presence of God cannot be in a place and things don't change. Amen. Hallelujah. No, you didn't hear. <laughs> hear me. The spirit of God can be in a place and nothing changes. But the presence of God, it is impossible. So Adam and Eve ran and hid from the presence of God. You see, you can dodge the presence, but you cannot dodge the Holy Spirit. Notice their capacity for the presence was still there. That's why God came. And God himself came to where they were. He didn't go to the wrong side of the garden. God went exactly to where they were. And they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. And the Lord called unto Adam and said, Adam... And said unto him, where are you? Because there was a disconnect. The presence was trying to engulf Adam. But Adam ran away from the presence. So God is seeking, you see, those who will worship him. God is seeking those who will worship him in spirit and truth. Notice God was the one looking for Adam, not Adam looking for God. Amen, amen. Let me talk to the people in overflow. I don't think the people in here got it. The teacher prophet. 
God was the one who was looking for Adam. When you enter the realm of the presence, yes, yes. it is God that begins to pursue you. Come on, yes. hallelujah. It is God that begins to look for you. Yes. Come on. It is God that begins to search for you. Yes. Because the Father is looking for this kind of people. They are so precious to him. God is the one who is coming. He's standing. He's saying, Adam, why are you not here? Where are you? The question you need to ask yourself is where am I when it comes to the proximity of the presence? This is a genuine question you need to ask yourself. When it comes to the presence of God, where am I? When it comes to the tangible presence of God, because when you see, you see, when we talk about the presence, what is a presence? A presence is the manifestation of the person. God being spirit, he is present in a sense, but you cannot feel his presence. But the presence means that This being that is eternal has given himself access to you. And where he is, you can come to him. Man. I don't know if somebody can hear me. When the presence enters your home, that child that has been addicted will be delivered. When the presence comes into your home, that person who did not repent will turn to God. Amen. When the presence is in a place, the fear of God is reborn in people. People begin to revere God again. Yes. Because your eyes will see him. The children of Israel were stubborn. They saw God on the mountain. They saw the presence on the mountain. You are like, mm-mm. God, Moses, you're going up. Moses went to God and said, these guys want to see you also. He said, no problem. Tell them to prepare themselves for X amount of days. I will come down and speak to them. Moses told them, all right, God said, you guys get ready. After these days, he will come down and meet with you. Purify yourself, sanctify yourself. They all said, cool, cool, cool. They went and did their thing. When the day came, God is descending from the mountain. They say, hey, Moses. <laughs> Moses, Moses, we believe you. Just stay with God up there. <laughs> Just bring us information of what he said. We, we don't want that. You see, it is easy to carry the spirit of God. It's not easy to carry the presence. It's good. People speak carelessly because they don't walk with the presence. And anyone that has never accessed the presence will never understand somebody who walks in the presence. When Gabriel came down and spoke to Zechariah the high the priest, and Zechariah the priest did not believe him when he said, You will have a son. And he said, How will I know if this will happen? Gabriel got offended. Do you know why Gabriel got offended? Gabriel looked at him and said, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence, meaning me, I see God. How dare you doubt me? He did not say, I am Gabriel who is with the spirit of God. He said, no, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence, meaning I am with the, I, I stand there. I came to you with information of what God is saying and you doubt because you have doubted. You will not speak until this child is born. When you encounter the presence, you carry the ability to judge things. Amen. 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 You will shut the mouth of your enemy and the enemy's mouth will be shut. Hallelujah. You will shut the mouth of lions. Yes. You will shut the mouth of witchcraft. Yes. Because your posture in him is different. Come on. Prophets of power don't speak from the Spirit of God, even though they are endowed with the Spirit of God. This is why men like Elijah said, As the Lord who lives, who I stand before, these were men of the presence, they were not men just of the Spirit of God. God 
God whom I stand before. Meaning physically you're seeing me here. But spiritually, I stand before God. Boy. I prophesy to somebody. Yes. Become a true worshiper today. Yes. That you will stand in the presence. Yes. You will walk in the presence. Yes. When you become a man or woman of the presence, demons begin to fear you. Amen. When you walk into a place, demons will become uneasy. Amen. Because there is no day. Listen to me. There is no day that where God is, demons were running around. You see, the presence of Jesus irritated demons. Jesus will go into a place. He didn't need to pray. His presence in a place. Demons will manifest. Then he has to command them, you bounce, you go, you go. The presence exposes darkness. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When you leave this place today, yes. those things that were in the background, yes. because of the presence, Hallelujah. they will no longer be able to hide. Amen. Uh, sit, sit for two seconds. Sit for two seconds. We are going somewhere. One of my secrets. Don't put my scripture up before I say it. One of my greatest secrets was this. When the Lord had called me to start the work. This was late 2011. In 2012 is when people started coming. The Lord Jesus would appear to me every evening. Sometimes it would be the angel of the Lord. Sometimes it would be him with the angel of the Lord. Sometimes it would be the angel of the Lord himself. But this, the Lord Jesus taught me. And I remember teaching it to a few of the people who were at the house. And I told them, guys, I'm going to teach you something that we are only going to do here. Those days were beautiful because they were, it was pure. It was so pure, it was so exclusive, it was about people who were genuinely hungry for the Lord Jesus. You see, now the problem is, many who want to hear from God want the man of God to agree with them. How will you be expanded? I don't go to the gym to confirm I can carry 60 pounds. I go to the gym so that the trainer can see I carry 60 pounds and he gives me 65 when I get to 65, he takes me to 75. Amen. He never allows you to be comfortable so that you're ever expanding. So good. But you see, the form of believing we have today is that unless we agree. Oh yeah, my spirit agrees. Oh yeah, my spirit. Yeah, my, it sat right with me. Do you think Jesus sat right with people? You know, it's just an easy, yeah, it means something is off. No, maybe it's a demon in you manifesting. No, it's true. You know, and some people can listen to some people, they say, something was just off. No, there is a demon inside of you, maybe, that is irritated because he knows this person can deliver you. I have seen it happen so many times. Ah, this is true. <laughs> hear me and hear me well. I said, hear me and what? Hear me well. The, I told them, this is what the Lord taught me. And he told me that whenever I want to do the supernatural miracle stuff, I need to be positioned when the presence comes, and this is what the Lord Jesus told me. He literally told me this. And I remember sharing it with the people at home. He told me this. He told me, when you are covered with this presence, everything becomes bendable. And I understood what he said by that. And I think he used my vocabulary at that time. Because he was trying to explain to me, nothing at that moment is impossible. So at the end of service, those days, because... You have to remember, most of my training of serving God didn't come because I was sat down and I was taught. 
I would do it at the end of the service. I would be like, all right, guys, come together. I, God told me that I can do this. Let, give me a second. Let me try. Who is going to be there? People have left and it's just us. I remember God telling me, anything is stretchable, bendable. You can do anything at that moment. It is from then that I started opening blind eyes, opening deaf ears. I began to do crazy miracles because I came to understand that if I can access the presence, then I can do that which is impossible. So for me to prove myself one day, I said, I don't remember who it was. I said, all right, give me your hands. They put their hands, and both their hands, you know people usually do this if something is uneven. Yeah. Say, give, give me, put both your hands like this. Say, okay, just stretch them like this. And I said, Lord, by what you showed me, let this hand grow abnormally longer than the other one. Ah, this thing grew like six inches beyond the other one. I got so scared. I said, Lord, what have I done? What if this person's hand doesn't go back? <laughs> I said, Lord, I, please let it go back. And he went back. I remember the person hysterically shocked. Then I understood. Those days I could make you grow taller if you wanted to be taller. You want to gain three inches. Okay, let's do it. Because I understood. Now maturing, I understood that, okay, this was just God showing me that it's possible. I can still do it. But I started, is it necessary? No. God was just showing me the extent of his power, like he showed Moses, take this stuff, throw it to the ground, it turns into a snake. Moses only did that one time and he never did it again. That's when I started opening blind eyes. That's when I started, and I told them, okay, guys, I'm going to teach you how to enter into God's presence. I told them, this is what you do. This is how you pray. I won't share it today. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Sit down for two seconds. Sit down for two seconds. Let me tell you the story. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll pray for you. No, 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 hear me, hear me. I taught them the prayer to pray. Let me tell you, within 30 seconds, you remember it? Everyone passed out on the ground shaking like electricity had entered. The, you, there was such a presence in, a, in the room. And I watched them and I was laughing at them because I was like, now you know why after every service those days I'll be like a chicken, like, you know. I would be, I would be physically like I am sick. Seriously. Because I was entering a place that I was not used to yet. And I even told, God told me, no, your tolerance will build because it is, then I started reading why these prophets were passing out, some were fainting, some were, it was, the presence is so strong. If you read in, it's Solomon when he built the temple and they worshiped, the presence came down, everybody passed out. The people are supposed to worship were down. Gabriel appears to Daniel. Daniel is down as if he's dead. I was literally, Mama, Mama, do you remember? Mama Onyango is here, Mr. Onyango is here. I was, it was like something was wrong with me. I was always sick, but there is no sickness. You can't diagnose anything. My body is just off. I, I, it was like too much because I was spending so much time in the presence and it was necessary for me to build the tolerance and the capacity. So my physical being was not yet prepared for that. And those days, if you saw me, I was like a stick. I was fasting all the time. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I paid my dues. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Amen. When I, you see me enjoying now, please let me enjoy in peace. Mm -mm 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 -mm. God will just take my appetite. I can't eat. I want to eat, but I can't. I am afraid for the night to come because if it comes, I know what is going to happen. I couldn't even run away. <laughs> you can't. If he's coming, he's coming. What are you going? And you always know when he's about to come. Ah. 
every your stomach feels like it's upside down you feel ah the presence of god is not easy but you are built into it until it becomes now a place that if you're not in you feel like something is wrong you know the presence of god when you experience the presence of god you will never fear demons again you realize that the person you should be fearing is god Amen. Amen. <laughs> I will be by myself in prayer. I'll be by myself in prayer. And the presence of God will just come in. I'll be closing my eyes. I can see the angel of the Lord. I can see, I can see the presence of, of God in the form of fire and light. Not very earthly. Ah, and then I feel like oxygen is... Re- I just open the door and pray outside. Rabba shatata. <laughs> <laughs> this is too much for me. Then when it comes down a little bit, I'll go back inside. <laughs> ah, it was too much. Now I'm used to it. But every time it bumps it up, I feel like I'm going to die. But you don't die. Everyone that day was on the floor. Everyone was on the floor. Everyone was on the floor. You just saw some, Everybody was like this. Oh, tongues you never heard. The first time I met Ashley, my daughter Ashley, and I'm telling you these things because it's, come, come Ashley. This is my son Lee's wife. Come, come Ashley. Ah, you are doing the look at this man. The first time I met Ashley, how many years ago? Um, Almost 10. Almost 10 years ago. When I met Ashley, she had come. Ashley had a big old growth on her throat. It was like this. Do you remember? Yes. She had a big old growth like this, huge. And I saw it and I, I feared for her. Because then he may turn cancerous. And that's when my friend uh, Jesse, Pastor Leslie Peter's son, had just gone home. Because he had some hunchkins or whatever and it was in the throat. It was huge. So it scared me. I told Ashley, just stand there and I did this. I literally did this. What happened? It went away immediately. It disappeared. No, everyone was watching. Ah. <laughs> you know, these days I've become, I'm on my best. You know, I'm so tempted next year to just misbehave. Amen. Amen. <laughs> please, 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 please go and see. Ah, those days I didn't care, but I think I'm coming back to that place where I don't care. Amen. Because Amen. I've been so diplomatic. I've been extra diplomatic, big time diplomatic. Maria, do you remember when I met you at Mama Lola's church? You remember that? Absolutely, that's why I'm here. How many years ago was that? Uh, you were 25 years old. I was 25. Guy, I'm 36 now. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember the man with the hunchback? Absolutely. There was a guy that was in church. When I just stood there, people were being freed. They live. Crazy stuff is happening. Crazy miracles happening. A man that had a big old hunchback on his back. He was literally like this. I'm, I'm not saying this as an insult. No. If you've watched Hunchback of Notre Dame, that's a, is it not true? true? It was 100% true. The guy was like this. He saw me just doing crazy stuff because this, those days I didn't have the maturity to be diplomatic. I was just going crazy. Yeah. Whatever God wants me to do, I was doing it. Close. This man, this man just ran. I said, now what does this man want? He said, I saw people's tumors and stuff disappearing. I, 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 I believe this can disappear. Amen. I was in the presence. I said, ah, easy. I did this. Pop. The guys, the t-shirt, everything just went flat. Whoop. The guy stood up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm 36 years old and I was 25 then. I can still do these things and I do them in other settings. When my son Uncle Fahed, is Uncle Fahed here? No, I know he just got engaged. My son, my son Uncle Fred just got engaged. Amen. And, uh, and, uh, and my son, Uncle Fred, 
he went to the hospital and he had like stomach pains and he was crazy going on and he had he couldn't eat whatever the doctors put a, a, a thing down his uh, his uh, his mouth and they looked at it was they found cancerous stuff they said my guy this is cancer we have to take out your stomach we have to put a bag on the side and he cried say ah papa i don't want this i don't want this why would i have this this is not god's will for me told him my son it's okay come to the house he came to the house they said, they said my surgery is on this day by friday i said delay it do you trust me he said papa i trust you with all my heart i said good come to the house i said just bring your own bottle of water come when he came to the house i just touched it i told him drink it on the after this friday after five days then go tell them to check you again took it, took it prayerfully. I gave him instruction how to pray. He goes back to the hospital. They put down the same thing. He said, please check again. They checked it. They said, yo, all the things that, whatever you did, keep doing it. Because whatever was in there is no longer there. It is not making any kind of... Amen. 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 It is not making any kind of sense. Not making any kind of sense. Now you see Uncle Fred here, no bag, nothing, it's just okay. They were telling him they were going to remove his stomach. You see, when you understand the presence, I'm not saying this to exalt myself. I'm telling you, this is something that God has made available for you if you learn how to genuinely worship God. Go to the Exodus scripture now, Exodus 33, I believe. Look at this. I'm going to finish with this. Then we are going to pray. Exodus 33 from verse 12. Hmm. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. Meaning that when he comes, there will be pain, but he will soothe you through the pain. Comfort doesn't take away pain. It calms you down. It's okay. It won't last any longer. The goal that is coming, what God has preserved for you is better. The presence suits you through pain. That's why the Holy Spirit is called what? The comforter. But when you see the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus is called what? The prince of what? Peace. Now peace also when it's in a place. Peace doesn't take away problems. Peace keeps you still during the trouble. Peace doesn't mean that things have gone away. No, peace just keeps you, gives you stillness to understand. Oh, <laughs> see, comfort is when you're crying. Peace is when you can see what God is doing through something. You can say, mm, God, I see it. I know this thing is not going to kill me. I know this is not going to be the end of me. I'm okay. This is fine. Peace. Peace is based on information. That's why Jesus said, the peace I give to you, the world cannot give you. You see, there is no certainty in the world. There's only certainty in God. Such certainty that you know, even if you are to give up the ghost, you are still with him. Peace. Now listen to what Moses says. Moses went to Egypt performed the craziest miracles crazy on the merit of his office which is his gifting children of god don't confuse gift with the presence when it is a gift it is you doing it when it is the presence it is god doing it amen, amen. i'm going to say it one more time when it is a gift, it is you doing it. It is limited. But when it is the presence, it is God himself. God who is doing it, not you. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou saith unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou will send with me. Wait, uh-huh. 
God is saying, Moses is telling God, God, you told me to bring up your people and I've done what you want, but I don't know who will go with me. Wait, what? This doesn't make any sense unless you comp continue. Yet thou said, I know thee by name and thou hast also found grace in my sight. He said, Lord, you told me to bring these people out of Egypt and I have done so. But until now, you have not told me who is going with me. You told me you know me by my name. You told me I have found grace in your sight. Verse 13. <laughs> now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee. Remember he's talking to a God that he's seeing. I want to know you. What do you mean you want to know me? I am with you. But God understands what Moses is asking for. That I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people. The guy is pleading his case. He's already with God. He's saying, God, if I have truly found grace in your sight, you say that you know me by name, then show me that I have found sight, uh, grace in your sight. And listen to Moses is asking for one thing. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give you rest. Wait, the whole time Moses is struggling in Egypt, there was no presence. Wow. Good. God knew if my presence goes, the children of Israel are coming out. But I want to convince Pharaoh that I am God. So Moses, I will send you with a gift. Mm. That's good. But when Moses came back, he realized something on Sinai remained on Sinai. Wow. Come on. Some people are not... <laughs> He realized, nah, something remained on Sinai. He said, nah, God, I've come back. This time, you said you know me by my name. You said I found favor and grace. Prove it. Until now, you have not told me who is going with me. God said, okay, okay, Moses. My presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. Notice, the presence is a hidden thing. It is only for those who have come to understand. Verse 16. <laughs> hmm. For where, wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? He said, so how will people know I found grace in your sight? You see, you measure grace by money, healing. Moses is saying, nah, I want your presence. Is it not it that thou goest with us? Moses is still not done. He's still pushing God. So shall we be separated? And I and thy people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. You see, what separates you is not that you have the Holy Ghost. What separates you from everyone else is the presence. Amen. Prophet Lovi Elias is different. Because I walk with the presence Amen. of Elohim. Amen. Not just with prayer. Not just filled with the Holy Ghost. But there is a presence. That is why a lot of people don't understand me. And they don't understand my method. You see like some years ago they were saying he's a palm reader. Whose palm did I read? Looking at my own palm is no palm reading. He's a palm reader. Whose palm did I read? <laughs> Whose palm did I read? <laughs> Looking at my own palm is <laughs> Christians. Hey. <laughs> Verse 17. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight and I know thee by name. If God knows you by name, if you are born again, if your name is in the Lamb's book of life, yes. you are supposed to not only walk with us. Amen. 
you are supposed to move with the dimension of the presence yeah. of the living God. Yeah. This is the place God has ordained for you. Verse 18, I'm finishing. Verse 18. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. You see, if the glory is to be revealed, you must have the presence. Amen. No presence, no glory. I'll say it again. No presence, no what? Glory. If there is no presence, there is no glory. The only way the glory of God can be revealed is when there is the presence. Because the presence makes a natural person seem supernatural. Elijah could just stand and say, it will not rain until I say so. Wait, what? Who are you? I'm a man of the presence. Amen. I tell you this, today you can stand and look at your life. Yes. And declare before everything that can hear you. Yes. Let me speak to somebody that is ready to. Yes. Because I stand in the presence of God. This shall be the outcome of my life. Amen. This will happen by this time. Yes. This will happen in this way. Yes. Notice this. Moses was so engulfed with the presence that God couldn't even take him out of the world. God had to tell him, can you die? The man had too much presence that the devil thought by getting Moses' body would get impartation. So he went to fight for Moses' body for what? The devil has never fought for anybody's body. There are two people that the devil wanted their bodies. That is why at the grave of the Lord Jesus, there were angels. Because if the bones of Elisha could bring somebody back to... Come on, come on, you're teaching. You're teaching. <laughs> ah. That Michael had to come and slap him around. What are you doing? God had to tell Moses, Moses... Go up the mountain and die. Go and die. Give up your spirit. He had elevated so much that it was Moses' decision to die. This guy was not getting any... He got so old that he can't get old anymore. <laughs> but this didn't matter. The Bible says his eyes were strong. His strength was not... So Moses was old, but the strength of a youth. The guy wasn't dying. God had to say, my guy, please. You have to go die. If I leave you, Joshua will die before you. You have to die, please. I need to change. Things need to... You have to remember, Moses carried such a presence. You see, Elisha went into the widow's house and the flour and the oil didn't run out. Moses was with a nation. The presence of Moses in a nation. If you added 50 pounds, your clothes also grew. Now this is in your Bible. If you added 50 pounds, your clothes also expanded. You lost 50 pounds, it was tailored to you. Your feet grew, your shoes grew. Nothing was expiring because of the presence this man carried. If you carry the presence of God, yes. you will never know poverty anymore. Yes. That money that you thought was a little will multiply upon... I want you to lift your right hand to heaven. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to lift your right hand to heaven. And you are going to call on God and you're going to tell the Lord, Lord, if indeed I have found favor with you, which I know I have because you have given me Jesus, what more evidence of favor and grace is more than you giving me your only begotten son? To suffer on my behalf. There is no greater sign of love. You know me by name. Father, because you know me by name, prove it by giving me your presence. The same presence that Moses experienced. Even more, that is what I desire. I desire it. 
that wherever I go, wherever I am, it will be known that you are with me, that I do not walk alone. Father, I pray, give me your presence. Thank you for filling me with the Holy Spirit. Thank you for endowing me with the Holy Spirit. But Father, I pray, may your presence not depart from me. Lift your voice and call on God. Lift your voice and call on God. Lift your voice and call on God. Your presence be with me today. I desire your presence, God. I desire to walk in your presence with your presence, so God. That your presence will go with me, God. May I walk in your presence. That I'm not alone, God. So that prove your spirit today, God. By giving me your presence, God. Prove yourself, God. By if I am your God, I am You know me by name. Cause me to walk with your presence. Prove yourself in me. List or room na maganda bageka. May people, may situations, may reina maguni basante bageka. Because of your presence within me, of your presence, God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I desire to walk in your presence. I desire to walk in your presence. Because I am 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 your presence. Because I am in your presence. Because I am in your presence. your presence. Because I am in your presence. Because I am in your in your presence. Prove yourself, God. Prove yourself in me. Prove yourself, God. Prove yourself that I am your Prove yourself, God. 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 Lift your voice, lift your voice.
blessing of God come upon you and come upon everybody that is here I decree and declare you will know the presence of God yes you will walk with the presence of God yes. you will experience the might of God yes. that your life will never be the same again in the mighty name of Jesus. may you walk in the presence of God begin to declare I receive it begin to declare I receive it Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice and say, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it, Ibrana. Make that declaration. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Ita katala ba 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 ba. Rama shondele ba de ba de. Rama zada makatala ba ba. Rama zada ba kotale ba de. Rama zada makata. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Rama shanda makatala ba 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 ba. Rama zere ba de. Rama Zanda Bakataya, Masura Mazanda Baba, Ekatala Barabasa. In the mighty name of Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. We receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ramo Zanda Bakasto Pariandele Baba. Thank you, Master. We receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 